question about the moduli. So for every Kalabi Yao, as you say, there's a big space of moduli, and on that space there is a natural measure. It's often said that up to scale, the volume of that moduli space is finite, but that's, of course, ignoring fixing the values of the moduli. No, no, there is a precise. If you're given a metric on the moduli space, then that is a precise question. Is the volume finite? And the answer is yes. Well, up to scale, I guess. I mean, the Calabria. No, there is, a, there is a precise scale. Actually, it's like in supergravity, the Kähler, the, the Kähler potentials quantized. There is a right scale. It's a line bundle. It comes a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a metric associated to a permission line bundle, so it actually has a right scale. Before fixing those by quantum correction? Well, we're talking about the, uh, well, again, uh, maybe we're I'm talking about the, the supergravity. Well -posed, uh, yeah, well, if, if you do classical reduction of supergravity on a you get uh, basically this Vey Peterson metric. Yeah. And that has a correct, uh, I mean, again, there, there can be something multiplying based, you know, but, but the whole moduli space is, is finite volume. And uh, yeah, that, that's, that's. Uh, I mean, that's very unusual that you have a priori, a set of. Uh, a measure on a set of physical solutions. Which well, is, I, I, we often yeah, but you don't haven't used know it, the measure, but again, this, this, this theory has a mathematical definition. These parts of the problem, like the Claudia moduli space, we know the mathematical definition, so it's just mathematics to work out that measure. Right? So that's, that's the long term. You know? If you have a theory that you really you know, have a precise definition of, these questions will get answered. Can I ask you a question, Michael, about Please. the general classification remark right. in the middle of the last slide? Are you suggesting that if we had the classification, we could then investigate such arguments? Or are you suggesting that if we had the classification, that would mean there would be arguments? Well, is it like a pot we don't, again, I, this I is, we don't, we, we, well, the basic, the, argu first, the basic argument at this point that you would try to make is that if there's a quantum gravity, there should be some way to put it in anti desitter space. And if there's some way of putting it in anti desitter space, it should have a gauge dual. And the gauge dual is a quantum field right. theory, therefore. OK, it's an ADS here. Right. right, now you could find loopholes yes. to that. So I won't say that that's the argument, but that's certainly a candidate argument. Right. OK, thank you. So my, my question will be slightly dishonest. So um, it generally agreed that a good scientific theory ought to be falsifiable. Now, you, you could uh, argue dishonestly that string theory has been already proven false twice. First one, because it started as a QCD and it failed. And second time, because it, it, it was resurrected as a theory of a unified theory of all known interaction, but it proved the wrong number of uh, dimension of space. And in fact, uh, probably all, all human observation up to the present point has corroborated the thesis as the number of dimensions is not 10 or, or 11, but only four. Now, naturally, you, the, the research program came with a defense, uh, defense argument against this, and this was the same argument as Kaluza and Klein, namely that the extra dimension is very small. The problem is once you start with this strategy, uh, you will always be able to account for all known observation. You, you will not be able to devise a test which will be able to falsify your theory because at any time in history uh, at which a certain energy level will be reached by known experiments, you will always be able to tell that the relevant size of the string of the extra dimension is sufficiently small not to be detected. So my question is, uh, do you think that it's possible to, to falsify string theory? And don't you think that the very way it is built up is made in order not to be able, not to be falsifiable? Okay, well, that's right. That's really getting to the point in my, my title and so forth. And I'll just kind of <coughs> repeat the aspects of my talk that, that tried to answer this. So uh, I think uh, the first point to make is that uh, you're not falsifying or, you know, a theory, you're falsifying a theory and an interpretation of the theory where you have a particular way of interpreting and making contact with the real world. And so examples like the QCD interpretation, you know, are just different than this question of can you interpret string theory in a way that describes all of physics as a fundamental theory. 
And uh, then this question, well, you know, whatever we discover, you know, maybe uh, one will just say, you know, there's some further structure, you know, within a compactification and so forth that uh, evade, allows it to evade falsification. Now, I, I gave it for an example of something, this uh, possible detection of time variation of the fine structure constant, which is totally out of the framework I described. You know, if people really become convinced of that, I will never give this talk again. You know, it just obviously will be false. And uh, so certainly there are many aspects of the uh, structure which uh, are falsifiable directly. They, they don't receive as much attention because most of the ones like that never got any, any experimental claiming claiming them. And so we, you know, there are a lot of things that we could list that, that we have no reason to expect. There's probably a waste of time to discuss them. So in that sense, it's falsifiable. But now, again, let, let's get into this question. Well, you know, we don't discover anything like that. We do discover some particles at uh, LHC. They are completely weird particles that nobody predicted. They don't have anything to do with you know, collective decline or supersymmetry and any of this other stuff. It's quite possible that would falsify string theory because you cannot get you know, every conceivable theory out of string theory, right? I mean, we don't know. You know it, turns, it may be that the theories you can't get out of string theory turn out to be inconsistent. But if there are other consistent theories, they might be of the type that you can't get. And there are things like, uh, you know, again, they, 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 they sound artificial. But for example, particular choices of gauge group and matter representation you can show cannot be produced out of anything that uh, you know, people have you know, you know, this broad class of known compactifications. And even things which were suggested in the context of green unification, where you talk about big groups, you know, you know, SU16 or something, and big representations with lots of boxes in the Young tablet. You can show that those cannot come out of any string theory construction we know about. There's no idea how to get them. So that might falsify. OK, so then let's suppose we don't see that. Let's suppose we see supersymmetry, one of these types of theories people sort of thought. Then you get into this more kind of detailed question where you'd like to know, well, you know, how many compactifications are there? What's the range of their possibilities? Maybe there's not so many, and they don't cover this whole space of theories, you know, so that uh, some things that seem plausible come out, other things that seem plausible just for some sort of combinatoric reason don't come out. Because that would be the, the point, the, the first point where you have to really start getting into the, the details I didn't talk about of these constructions. And you might imagine falsifying at that level. But suppose, and this has also been suggested, but suppose that every consistent gauge group and matter content and coupling can come out of string theory, and the ones that don't come out are, are not consistent. OK, well, then what does it mean? Well, I think that that's the point where you're forced into having to understand the measure factor. And then, again, I'll repeat this analogy to the Schrodinger equation. And again, it's a sort of, sort of analogy problem. But I like, I like these things, you know, as opposed to uh, the things we don't know how to think about. At least here's something we know how to think about that illustrates. You know, so suppose you know the Schrodinger equation, and somebody asks you, well, you know, well, what are the phases of matter? You know, you've got molecules. You know, they, they make solid, liquid, and gas. And, you know, can you, can you give some general theory of that. You could go home, and if you're very smart, you would come back, and you, you, would, you would answer that question. OK, and then, then you would say, well, yeah, OK. Now, I happen to know that uh, when you uh, melt a solid into a liquid, it expands. You know? OK, so uh, can, you, can you show that? And you would go home, and probably having done all the work you did before, you'd come back very quickly and give the general argument. And uh, then you say, ah, but I know a special substance which, uh, when it uh, melts, it contracts. And when you put it under pressure, the, uh, you know, the uh, melting point uh, goes down. You know, so the pressure can melt it. Can you find that substance? You know, and that would be really hard, because that, you know, again, it, it is a special case of your theory, but it depends on very subtle interactions and energy differences. You know, but you might go and calculate for a long time. And it's very, of course, important even anthropically, you know, the answer to that question. And uh, you know, the, probably the type of question we face is of that, at least of that order of difficulty. And so we shouldn't be surprised that it will take a while. But, but if, if the world was shown not to be supersymmetric, would, would that falsify string theory, you think? Not supersymmetric? Yes. Would oh, that no, falsify? no. These are arguments you can look up in my 2006 review. In okay. fact, it might even turn out that you work through this measure theory, this measure factor business and all this, and you'll find that supersymmetry would falsify string theory. Right, that the measure would be overwhelmingly concentrated on things without supersymmetry. We, don't, we just don't know at present. 
if I may, just on a comment on the supersymmetry and a query that goes with it. I mean, I'm always struck by the difference, you know, the motivation, as you know, for supersymmetry is really, really, a supersymmetry is very strong, simply because it's very hard to see a way of bringing in the strong interaction without it. That, that fundamental symmetry, you know, was really a very neat way around a lot of no-go theorems. But, you know, the accompanying argument from string theory is uh, of a necessary but not sufficient condition is, is, as you know, you know, from a philosophical viewpoint, that's much, much weaker, you know. But I take your point that basically, and we, we always get this far and no further, it's always, it'll cast light on low energy physics. But, you know, I'd love to hear more on that. Like, for example, let's suppose a neutr neutralino turns up and we actually have, you know, it has a mass, let's say, a thousand times known neutrino. How does that help when you look at an equation like the busov polchinsky equation? How, how does that actually help okay. directly? Well, right? again, that, that could be a, a subject of a whole book. I mean, uh, obviously, busov polchinsky is too simple and you would need much more detailed considerations. And, 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 and people do work on this sort of thing. You know, there's this whole story of, uh, I mean, first of all, the, you know, this, this is a superstring and it always has supersymmetry. You know, the question is, is it at an energy low enough that we can never hope to see it? Is it at a high but not too high energy? And a lot of people now will, will argue that supersymmetry should be broken around uh, 30 to 100 TeV, you know, obviously in light of having not seen it at LHC, but there were independent arguments, just people did not like those arguments before, and now they are forced into, uh, you know, taking them more seriously, and I, I could go into that. But then from this uh, top-down point of view, people do, you know, they pro propose extra dimensions, and they try to calculate and make a plausible assumptions and so forth, and some people do come out with masses of neutralinos and things. And uh, I think, again, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's a little strong to claim, you know, I don't think anybody can really claim to have a controlled calculation of that sort, but I think that's the sort of thing which is attainable in the not too distant future. The, prob the, the deeper problem is this one that if you have a huge number of vacua, you know, making the different predictions, how do you know which ones to take seriously? Okay, just one last point on that, on the falsification on the other side, which was just mentioned. I mean, I would be hopeful there, of course, because as you know, I mean, you know, even minimal models could take an extremely long time to, to, to eliminate, never mind that, you know, you could go and speaking of, it, it, yeah. it could, it's almost unimaginable how you would finally falsify every version of supermetric theory, I would have thought. So you certainly can't turn it around and use it the other way, I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, it can take a long time for these things to. Did I understand to say that there's a space with a metric on it and the, the space has a finite, Vo a fixed volume or a finite volume? I mean, surely. Finite. I mean, I mean, again, it, it, we, it depends upon a unit. I mean, if you change from inches to centimeters, you change the you change well, the, the, the nominal. The case of finiteness is, is of course, independent of that consideration. And uh, again, we should really start getting into details. But but as you know, my, my primary example was this moduli space of the Calabi-Yau manifold, and you can prove that that's finite. And then even the unit turns out to be fixed in this application because there's this uh, quantization of the uh, modulized space metrics in terms of the Planck constant, as I know from a paper of Bagger and Witten from the old days. And you know, this, this, there is a correct number, actually, for that volume. So I've, I've got the string landscape over there, and I've got chaotic inflation over there. What is the mechanism whereby different vacua there get realized in the different bubbles over there? Well, I follow, you know, I'm willing to accept what uh, these people tell me, that uh, if you have a potential with certain properties in any number of fields, then, uh, you know, you can model large region of the universe as constant scalar fields at some point in that landscape, and it might roll down, or it might bounce back up due to quantum fluctuations, and I'm just accepting what they tell me. That's the mechanism. Do you, do you have a, a more precise question? Again, as, my, as I understand, their discussion is, uses very few details of, of the structure of that potential. And I, I, you know, people, you know, me included, have shown those, those few claims that you that need. The picture of the potential with the bumps and so on, it, it, it somehow doesn't seem tied into the string landscape, which is a complete... Oh, there are a few... Well, I mean, it is. I mean, again, these are just generic pictures because uh, it's very hard to obviously draw a 500-dimensional landscape and... Uh, focus in on you know, the specific aspects of little parts of that potential. And that's obviously not the level on which we want to work. We have to work on a larger scale and statistically. But there are these few particular properties that the potential must satisfy for eternal inflation, which roughly, I think, is to say that there must be regions where the, the standard epsilon and eta parameters of order one are larger. And given that, you have eternal inflation.
Thank you very much. Sure.